what is the point of the hemoglobin saturation curve, right? Obviously, I think the, the point is it gathers up um, oxygen in areas where there's lots of it and drops it in places where there's not enough. Essentially, what it does is it keeps our, our PO2 relatively stable, okay? Um, the, the, we change from steep to flat at around 40, which tends to keep our oxygen concentration um, at the low end sort of pinned to 40. Because if we get, if our PO2 drops below 40, hemoglobin starts releasing more oxygen until it gets back up to 40, right? So it's, we, we tend, 40 tends to be our normal because that's the inflection point. Um, <clears throat> so uh, a small change in PO2 in the steep part means a large change in saturation. So even a small increase in oxygen increases saturation a lot. But more importantly, remember saturation, we talk about it in medicine like it's a good thing. It's a carrying state. A 99% saturated patient is a full truck, okay? A full truck isn't doing the body any good. The good happens as it drops off, right? So when the key to this steep part is as PO2 goes down, saturation drops dramatically. So a drop from 60 to 30 is not a bad thing. That's releasing 30% of the oxygen that was bound to hemoglobin into the tissues where it's desperately needed, right? <clears throat> okay, so that 40 tends to keep us in that narrow range. Low PO2 causes more, causes vasodilation, which brings more volume. That was our earlier graphs about oxygen consumption. Yeah, so when oxygen goes down even a little, okay, so like you have a tissue, it's, it suddenly has become busy. So the O2 drops, right? You're gonna get vasodilation at the front, autoregulation at the um, pre-capillary sphincter. That's gonna bring more blood flow in, okay? That more blood flow in that region of poor oxygenation is gonna result in a large decrease in saturation and a big delivery of oxygen. So it essentially keeps the O2 pinned between like 15 and 40 most of the time. This system is so effective that you're more likely to have oxygen deficit because of blood flow problems than you are because of hemoglobin problems, okay? You know, you've all heard of anemia. Patients can walk around, even jog a little with a hemoglobin of eight, right? that shows you how impressive this molecule is. Like even when there isn't enough of it, it still works really well. All right, so if we look at the um, uh, partial pressure of oxygen as we go across the, uh, the, the cardiovascular system and look at different states, okay? So here's our amount of oxygen in the blood. I will look up the percent because I don't know why it's like that. I just think of it as an amount but you're right. Um, <clears throat> so in venous blood in exercise, there's almost none, right? And I think that makes sense because in exercise, you know, all of the oxygen is being used up by the busy tissue. So what's coming back has been completely depleted. Now that isn't a problem because it's going to come to the lungs and it's going to get re, re um, diffused into uh, um, PO2 of 100 again. All right, in normal venous blood, right, our PO2 is like between 15 and 40, okay? And then in, um, uh, and then our normal arterial blood is up here. This shape is the same shape as the hemoglobin saturation curve, right? So they're just showing you, the picture is just trying to show you that the steepest parts are in line with where tissues most need oxygen. The flattest parts are in line with the tissues that least need oxygen, right? So we don't want to deliver oxygen to areas that don't need it, and we do want to deliver oxygen to the areas that do need it. So this allows for that to happen. 